Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a German TSX Premium Cruiser which is currently in the Blitz Pass and uh, yeah, sorry for the delay I was completely unaware that this was actually going to come out in the Blitz Pass. I think everybody was. We were all a little bit surprised that the ship was actually already out and uh, we hadn't really heard about it yet. So we'd seen the ship but we just didn't know when it was going to come out. So. This is the Leipzig, the actual lead ship of the Leipzig class of light cruisers. The second one, her sister ship, would have been the Nuremberg, which has been in the tech tree since forever. But this one is a premium at tier 6, same thing. The Leipzig actually is somewhat different from the Nuremberg, or was somewhat different from the Nuremberg. For once, well, she was the first one to be built. For once, she was a bit smaller. I had significantly less AA gun, uh, fewer AA guns and had smaller torpedoes. So the Leipzig actually had 500 millimeter torpedo tubes, whereas the Nuremberg had the 533 millimeter. And the Leipzig has been, well, busy. Uh, she's been torpedoed by, <laughs> by a British submarine, HMS Salmon, and uh, almost got sunk. They got quite lucky that the second torpedo didn't hit. And uh, has been doing escort duty, mine laying, and has found a relatively <laughs> a relatively dishonorable end by getting in the way of the Prince Eugen. And the Prince Eugen actually managed to sail home, well, almost through the ship. And she was so damaged after that that uh, she was just towed to port and um, sort of just kept afloat, but no, was no longer in a combat-worthy shape or form in any way whatsoever. So that was the historical Leipzig. Now we actually, there were two Nuremberg class, uh, Leipzig class light cruisers, the Leipzig and the Nuremberg. We have three in the game. How does that happen? Well, <laughs> we also have the, and when it's loading, there we go. We also have the Admiral Makarov, the uh, Soviet version of the Nuremberg. So we've got a couple of things to compare, but let's begin with Leipzig versus the actual Nuremberg. And see how they differ. Now, first thing, uh, first thing we notice is that the ship skills are very, very different. The Leipzig gets an engine boost and a rapid reload, whereas the Nuremberg has the sonar and the precise aim. Now, it is an engine boost one, and while these are not slow ships, they're not super quick by any means whatsoever. So, hull is completely identical. Maneuverability is similar enough that you, I think you could call it identical as well. The guns is where we're starting to see the first difference. Now, obviously, these are the same guns, but uh, the Leipzig gets a shorter range and a long ba longer base reload than the Nuremberg, which is well probably due to the fact that she does get a rapid reload and, uh, you know, compensating for that a little bit. So you are losing uh, 0.4 seconds of base reload and 600 meters of range. Other than that, these are exactly the same guns as you find on the Nuremberg. So German 150 millimeter, quite powerful. Uh, and the HE, even though it doesn't do an awful lot of damage, still has a 4% uh, fire chance. So in a, in a pinch, if you're firing at battleships at long range because you're on low on hit points, you can still use the HE. The torpedoes is where it gets interesting. Well, first of all, these are historically not the right torpedoes because the Leipzig has 533mm to torpedoes. And somewhere in there, the Germans have managed to maintain the speed, maintain the warhead, <laughs> maintain the reload... Uh, but to squeeze an extra three kilometer, three kilometer range out of these things. So uh, this is quite significant because, well, see, the Nuremberg is really sort of more of a scout cruiser almost. Uh, she, she's got a good amount of firepower, but she really doesn't, uh, she really can't take any kind of return fire. And uh, the short range torpedoes meant that, well, it's tier six, so it's either working or you're going to have to resort to sort of long-range gunnery, and then um, you're still going to do a good job, but uh, sort of the fun is sailing circles around battleships that haven't learned yet that you can steer the ship left or right, and uh, dropping torpedoes into them, because these things come with 12 torpedoes, and while they don't do an awful lot of damage individually, there's quite a lot of them. Also, obviously, the gun layout means that you occasionally have to be a little bit creative <laughs> with how you're sailing these things. The Leipzig now, on the other hand, can actually... Uh, I think if we're looking down at the concealment, yes, the Leipzig actually can stealth torpedo, which is not how you should be playing the ship, but um, because you'd be wasting the guns, but she can. So the, the range on these torpedoes is means that she can be a lot more prolific with them 
and uh, given that you've got 12 and they reload reasonably quickly, you can use them quite a bit more, you know, just hurl them in the general direction of enemy accumulations and see what hits. Whereas this is not something you can necessarily do with the Nuremberg, you do have to proper rush something like battleships that have get themselves isolated or are not paying attention and then just donk torpedoes into their side. Uh, the AA on the Leipzig is actually worse than on the Nuremberg, which is historically accurate. Uh, not that it makes any difference, because, uh, uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you're, you'll be in trouble if you come under air attack. The concealment is slightly better, which is also making sense, because the Leipzig was a bit smaller than the Nuremberg. So, uh, an interesting, interesting, uh, interestingly accurate setup for now. Let's have a look and compare with the Makarov, because the Makarov also gets the rapid reload. And the Makarov gets the defensive AA, which is, an, again, an in interesting choice. The Makarov has, has a faster base reload, and she gets the rapid reload. But the Makarov loses two of the torpedo launches, which, by the way, is accurate, because both the Leipzig and the Nuremberg had, their torpedo, had uh, one pair of their torpedo launches removed at some point. And the Makarov has a little bit better AA, but um, still not an AA cruiser, but... Uh, the Makarov is sort of the Soviet version, more guns than torpedoes of, of that. And uh, all in all, I think this is an interesting, it's, a, it's an interesting combo. So we've got the Nuremberg, which is the short range torpedoes, really good guns. We've got the Leipzig, which has the, the sa pretty much the same guns, but with, uh, with, a, uh, with a shorter range and with a slower base reload. And it's sort of a little bit noticeable. And then, but, but she does get the long range torpedoes and then you get the Makarov, which is gonna go all the guns, but uh, is kind of lacking in the torpedo department. Also with the, I think there was something with the turret that was different on the Makarov, but um, we're here to look at the Leipzig. So what can we do? We can get ourselves more hit points, more large caliber AA damage and main battery traverse speed. So obviously we're not doing that because that'd be silly. Instead, we're going for the main battery reload, which is much appreciated. And uh, I am using my, I'm using the same setup that I, I use on, on the Nuremberg as well. Um, rub, uh, uh, reload on reload on one. I'm sort of struggling a little bit between propulsion and steering here, but in the end, uh, these ships can be a little bit lazy on the rudder, and it really does help if you have if you have the improved uh, steering from a double steering, especially a tier six because you, these ships really, really can't take any fire. So it, it sort of allows you to be a bit more aggressive. The one reason I've been kind of going back and forth on the Leipzig is that the Leipzig doesn't get a sonar. And you'd think, okay, well, how, how relevant is that? Well, if you are going after destroyers and uh, they're in mid-tier, torpedoes reload reasonably quickly. There can be a lot of torpedoes in the water. Uh, destroyers have smoke screens. If you're going after destroyers in the Nuremberg, the destroyer is in a world of trouble. In the Leipzig as well, but you don't have the sonar. So you do have to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more predictive in with torpedoes, similar to what you would have to do in the Makarov. But that's, uh, that's why I was kind of leaning towards, oh, well, maybe I need propulsion, but then the acceleration on these ships is not bad. So double steering is what I ended up with. By the way, um, you might be asking yourself uh, if you've been spotting that. Terry, you've got the historical camo on this ship. Why does it look like a stock ship? Well, let me show you what happens when you take the camo off. Nothing. <laughs> well, almost nothing. Uh, this is one of the, I would say, lazier historical camos. <laughs> like, really? That, that, that's it? A lighter shade of grey. <laughs> Uh, the the, the camo gives us uh, firing range, torpedo range, traverse, and surface detection, which is, I think, the same what the other one does, only that for the Nuremberg it doesn't make a massive difference. It's got 5.6 uh, instead of 5.4 kilometers. This thing, with the historical camo on, actually gets a torpedo range of 8.7 kilometers and a surface detection of 7.2, which means um, we are actually reasonably, reasonably uh, able to to shoot torpedoes without being spotted if the need arises. But then again, you'll be foregoing the guns. And who wants to do that? Now, one thing I am wondering, I don't seem to be having a commander in here. Um, and I'm not sure where he went. So 
it's entirely possible it's entirely possible that I forgot <laughs> I think I've been testing this thing without a com without a captain uh, but uh, so let's let's quickly catch up on that so so my my <laughs> it's been a hectic week all right <laughs> Uh, so the test battles are probably be played without a captain. So, uh, unless unless I I, mis I misplaced him somewhere, it's not in the Nuremberg either. Anyway, let's put one in, uh, and so we do have two rapid reloads. If we got three rapid reloads, then I had a captain in it because I, I totally can't remember. So let's put someone in there. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, just a regular one. He'll, you'll do, and. Uh, uh, we would obviously reset that and we would probably take underwater protection yes uh, we don't get a sonar so we don't uh, we can use either the armament repair in case you get your gun shot off or the torpedo alert i am going to go with the torpedo alert here a uh, very light cruiser all of these choices pretty good uh, i am going to probably stick with the artillery maintenance meh or with the Damage control. Nah, I'm gonna stick with this one. But it's it's equal choices. Here is obviously victorious charge. Uh, we have a rapid reload, so we want to get another one here. Uh, we do want. We don't have a sonar, so we do want the exploit weakness here. Uh, don't have precise aim, so fully prepared. And then we're already at tier seven. But uh, uh, yeah, generally, yeah, that, that's about as high, as high as I would put it. But man, it's a premium. Maybe you put something. You put something more powerful on it. But uh, so you would. Let's just go up and. Again, this is not the commander that I've been testing with because I have no idea what happened to him. <laughs> but uh, you would... Um, I would personally probably take the Adrenaline Rush, to be honest, because the Extinguisher, yes, it's going to reduce the amount of fire damage you're taking, but... Uh, mm, it's tier 6, right? Ah, Adrenaline Rush, probably. Uh, engine boost, so we want the engine overload. And we definitely want the master reloader because we've got the rapid reload. And it's a German ship, so we obviously would want the armor piercing cap shell in here. And then on this thing, probably the giant hunter. Uh, we could take horizontal protection, but it's not going to make a difference against battleship shells because this is a very light cruiser and battleship shells are just going to blow right through it no matter what you're doing. So, uh, so the giant hunter would be my choice here probably, especially with the long range torpedoes. Okay. So, uh, what have I missed? Uh, we've looked at the camo, we've looked at the equipment, looked at the elite bonus. I think we've got everything. So let's see the Leipzig in action. The first game, yes, it's mid-tier. Yes, it's Golden Channel. Yes, what you think is going to happen is probably going to happen. We are fighting Zuyu, Fuso, a König, a Conte de Cavour, a Kotowski, Hatsuharu and Nicholas. So three destroy, uh, two destroyers on the enemy team. And off we go. Uh, the gun layout on these on these ships, if you've never played the Nuremberg, can get a little can, can take a little getting used to because you've got two super firing turrets in the rear, which makes them actually reasonably good kiters. And with the torpedo range on this thing, that might actually be a viable tactic. But the other thing that is really nice about these guns are the 150 millimeter armor piercing shells. <laughs> so especially if you're dealing with destroyers. So off we go, and here we can use the engine boost actually to get ourselves into the capture circle a little bit earlier and see what we can do. Uh, they come preloaded with HE. I would strongly recommend switching to AP. HE is sometimes a decent choice if you're fighting battleships at range and you can't really reliably target their uh, bow stern section. But uh, if you're fighting at closer ranges, then AP is, is generally the better choice. So let's get ourselves into the capture circle, but with two enemy destroyers. And there might be some torpedoes eventually in the water. Uh, there comes the carrier. And we have... Uh, both carriers are going after the destroyers, which is good. So the Hatsuharu has already taken some damage and seems to have stopped there. Now, we do have to give a lot of broadside in this ship to, uh, to, get, the, to get the rear guns on target, which can be... And I think he's actually reversing. It's difficult to tell at this range. But uh, as long as he re as he gets out of the capture circle, I'm all good with it. The Nicholas, however, has not gotten the memo that uh, there is a German light cruiser in the capture circle. So he is sailing in broadside, trying to get his torpedoes away. Rapid reload up, and let's teach him the error of his ways. And uh, that is about half the Nicholas gone. And if he's not making, if he's not going to make a, a, an exit there. Yep, the carrier is coming after me. Then that is an ex Nicholas. Unless he gets out of there, of course. Insta flood on the one torpedo. 
But uh, we have gotten the Nicholas for our troubles. And uh, yeah, the enemy team's in the capture circle and our team is very much not in the capture circle. Uh, let's get some shots out. That is a Kotowski. So a... I can't remember if it's a light cruiser. It probably is. I don't think there are many heavy cruisers around this tier that aren't Japanese. So uh, let's get some shots out of that thing and just back off because I still want to be... I want to be inside the capture circle. But there you see the firepower of these uh, German 150mm guns. Okay, let's get back in the capture circle because nobody else wants to from the, uh, from the, from the friendly team. And uh, just revert. Uh, okay, there's a Fuso. Uh, let's let's uh, try the HE for a little bit. Uh, he's, he's outside. He's outside torpedo range because at this range, the 150s, unless you can reliably target Bauer Stern, are not particularly effective with the AP. Uh, going for a fire might not be a bad choice here. And you can always, you know, you can sail a little bit in reverse. Uh, do have to obviously keep an eye on on enemy shipping. Okay, there is there's some things over there. So we we're going to go stern in, <laughs> not bow in, because these guys are all buggering off at this point. And I'm still trying to capture the capture circle, but, you know, nobody else seems to be particularly interested. Our destroyer has sailed the long way around the map, obviously, because, as you all know, that's where you have to go when you're in a destroyer. Uh, do not go anywhere near the capture circles. And uh, is trying to go after the carrier. As dodging some torpedoes in reverse. Oh, the Hatsuharu is there. Still sitting there. So back to the MVP thing we go. And uh, see if we can do something about that guy. Uh, no, he, he is actually he is actually active. He's just not doing something. He's uh, I mean he's firing, but he's not moving an awful lot. The problem is he's bowing towards me, which makes him relatively difficult to hit with these guns. But um, uh, we can sail out a little bit and see if we can just hit him on the reverse. But now we are also capping because I think we have uh, we have shoot him out of out of the capture circle. And uh, we have, uh, we are leading one kill, but there comes a quantity of Cavour. Yeah, and that is what happens when the battleship shoots at you. So torpedoes drop in the general direction. And uh, now we better make ourselves scarce before he can reload, because that would hurt. So uh, at this range, uh, at this range, I can hit, I can target the bow section. So that is what I'm doing. And I'm giving the least possible uh, amount of surface for him to shoot at. And that worked a hell of a lot better. So <laughs> now, uh, now I can probably gun him down before uh, before he can make uh, before he can reload, uh, unless the carrier just takes him out, which he just did. So that's good. Uh, the Hatsuharu is coming back and has not learned his lesson. Uh, I mean, hasn't really done an awful lot, but is about to find out that yes, this happens when you are broadsiding a German light cruiser. And with this one, it happens relatively rapidly again, uh, especially once I get the rapid reload up. So the Hatsuharu is uh, going undetected, uh, which means I can drop some torpedoes into, onto that König there on long range. And uh, the Hatsuharu is gone over there. Okay. Can't shoot at him. Uh, this is not something you could do with a Nuremberg, by the way. You can't torpedo at that range. So that's one of the differences. And uh, even with the engine boost, the engine boost is nice. It gives her like uh, 36, almost 36 knot. But uh, okay, the Hatsuharu has killed the Congo. So if he, he can either go after the carrier or he can come up north. And if he's coming up north, as he does, then he's dead. <laughs> because that's where I am and I've just been waiting for him. And now he's dead. Uh, so... That's that thing down. Uh, that leaves us with uh, the König and the enemy carrier. We're holding the capture circle, and uh, that would be game unless we get our, we get us we get all of us killed in uh, the last remaining minute thirty, which I th uh, have doubts about. Uh, but that Congo is going to give it a good try. So uh, let's uh, let's give him some fire support here. Unfortunately, I've triggered the rapid reload while the, uh, while I was firing uh, over at the other side, so the guns are not yet on target. The uh, turret traverse is not the greatest on these ships. But uh, even at, at that range, if you hit the stern, if you hit the stern section of an enemy battleship, then uh, you can do very nice and reliable full penetrations. But uh, there's the Zuiho, so let's finish that thing off. Uh, it gives more, gives more points. But yeah, the, uh, the battle is won at this point. Uh, the carrier tries to to desperately do something about me. I'm just gonna drop some torpedoes in the general direction of that König if he still needs killing, and then we'll take down the carrier. And almost, <laughs> that should be game, just need to dodge some torpedoes here. And that is a dead carrier. And I think the, the König is dead as well, so there we go. That's that taken care of. Uh, just like the Nuremberg, 
a very good ship at dealing with destroyers and um, a very capable ship of dealing with battleships just don't get shot <laughs> in return because uh, they can do very very unpleasant things to you and the more long-range torpedoes give you a bit more of an opportunity to you know score some torpedo hits compared to Nuremberg unless you're getting up close and personal which is something you generally want to do but um, still it's a good alternative so let's go again and here we are on Bay of Storms and it coincidentally is a bit windy out so if you hear something in the background no that is not the map that is actually the outside here uh, Boke, Mackensen, New York, Deflinger the Deflinger is a dreadful ship <laughs> Uh, just a quick side note, I've actually been thinking of doing a review on it just because of, you know, uh, World War One and Jutland and all these kind of things, but my gosh, well, that thing is not fun. Uh, Nuremberg, Pensacola and Alba. No destroyers in here, so off we go. No destroyers in here on the enemy team, that is. We do have an Anshan of ourselves, but it's a carrier battle, so, well, this is mid-tier, I think, relatively early after the uh, after the the flip so whenever w whenever the season ends and everybody's uh, everybody's rank gets get reset you, you find the most interesting battles in mid-tier because you can get a wild mix from people who have absolutely no clue what they're doing to people who are literally just starting out again and uh, and regrinding their their ranks here <laughs> so it's it's at the beginning of the month mid tier is not guaranteed to be full of derpage so i'm going to drop some torpedoes in there and then afterwards i realized after i just did that i realized that um, oh actually there are no enemy destroyers that can i can make it into position by the time my torpedoes get there so uh well, that's fine by the by the time i have anything in range they'll be reloaded Hello, Mr. Alba. Let me introduce you to my little friends of 150mm armor piercing. And that is a heavy cruiser, but that doesn't mean that he, that I should need high, I should need to fire high explosive on it or something. So with the with the reload on this thing, you can definitely make something happen. But we do need to be careful about the battleships. And there comes the Mackensen. The Mackensen is not particularly, it's not as dreadful as the Durflinger, it's not, it's not particularly uh, precise, but at this range I'm probably better off firing high explosive to be honest, because the, the AP isn't going to do an awful lot and I can't really target uh, Barnstern. Now there is a burning Durflinger, which probably got hit by the carrier, who has gone undetected, but we can still see his fire. So the fire just either burned out or he damaconed it, and uh, he's returning fire. So let's see if we can rapid reload a couple of uh, a couple of additional fires. Now here comes the 4% fire chance, which is okay, but it's nothing outstanding. The carrier is obviously trying to go for the double tap here with uh, with the perma flood, but isn't getting it. And uh, we'll see if we can cause a fire on the Deflinger, but the Deflinger is painfully aware of that. Has run into a little bit of a conflagration over there with the Alba and the Mackensen. They're all trying to turtle on this side, and the, the, even the carrier is joining in on the fun now. So we'll just probably drop some torpedoes in the general direction of this bulk of ships over there and I think at this point the Mackensen probably re has probably repaired the damage so uh, uh, sorry it has probably uh, reloaded the the the, uh, the damage control kit that's what I was trying to say and even if I was going to get a fire it wouldn't be particularly effective but uh, that's why I'm switching back to the armor piercing <laughs> because you know there we go there comes the fire and now he's probably damaconing it Ugh. and now I switch to the AP anyway Back to the HE. <laughs> Try to go for the perma fires, but um, uh, honestly, Mackensen is so. Uh, I should probably be okay to even just fire AP at, at this range, but um, uh, we we're we're one kill down already at this point. But uh, there are a couple of ships that are relatively low on hit points, and that Bogue is now coming in uh, my direct line of attack. So uh, let's drop some. Where's he going? Uh, is he turning? It doesn't look like he's turning. So let's just drop some torpedoes on him. And yes, these guys are uh, are shooting at me. So back to AP. Just don't sit still. Uh, always turn. Uh, German battle cruiser is not not particularly precise. So always make sure that you vary your your speed, your course, and your your angles. And uh, then you should be relatively safe. Also, just keep in mind that you do not have a sonar. Which means uh, do need to watch out for our torpedoes, and that is a dead boat. 
So let's get ourselves back to the Deflinger, which is still trying to engage me in a long-range gun duel, which is not a great idea if you're on a Deflinger, because that thing's got a dispersion measured in postcodes. All right, let's get ourselves back in there, engine boost up, and uh, see if we can do something about that thing again. Once we get close enough, and he's back, back to reversing, once we get close enough to um, to uh, to fire uh, reliably into Bowen's turn, we can switch to armor piercing. In fact, actually with something like that, uh, you probably s I, c I could have probably just used APOs even from this range, but uh, I was trying to grab another fire here, just for, you know, just for the fun of it, but it, it's not particularly effective. Oh, there's the double fire, not set by myself. <laughs> so, there's still a Pensacola out there. There we go, fire, and the Alba gets the kill. So we can go back to the AP because we're now up against Alba and Pensacola. Uh, that New Mexico is running a little low in hit points and uh, it is a Pensacola, but these things got a lot of firepower. So I do need to also be a little bit careful, which just means I am gonna let the New Mexico go first. And since the Pensacola is already focusing him, I'm just gonna land some fire support. And against cruisers, again, <laughs> armor piercing, very effective. And with the rapid reload up, we've got a six second reload on these 150s. So uh, that Pensacola is practically melting and the torpedoes haven't hit, but uh, that thing is dead. There come the Alba torpedoes. Alba is going after me, but uh, I think now has again a New Mexico to shoot at. So that's what your battleships are for. <laughs> do you just, do you just uh, go and see if, we can, if, see if we can kill the Alba before he kills the New Mexico. Secondaries from the New Mexico should do the trick. There he goes. That would be a close quarters expert, yep. And I think it's just one battleship left at this point, so we can just sit in the capture circle and, because uh, that thing just killed the Königsberg. But uh, that's that's that. So, Leipzig, is it a good ship? Yeah, uh, just the same way that the Nürnberg's a good, sh good ship. It's, uh, it's a slightly different aspect. So it's not just a, just a copy paste with, uh, it's not a black ship, right? So the, the combo of slight uh, rapid reload, somewhat tempered by the slightly slower, uh, by the slightly slow uh, slower base reload, and with the three kilometers extra on the torpedoes, actually chain can change the playstyle on this ship, because with the rapid reload you can occasionally try to go for the fires, even though it not always is successful because the chance is relatively low, but you can. Uh, you get a an improved DPS against enemy destroyers, even though you don't get the sonar, and you can uh, you can use your torpedoes much much more prolifically than you can do in the Nuremberg, and have it allows for a different playstyle than having to rush enemy ships in order to get the torpedoes away. So I think in all in all, it's a very nice and balanced ship, and if you're in for a light cruiser at tier six, then. Uh, and you don't already have the Nuremberg or the Makarov, or you already do have the Nuremberg and the Makarov and, and thoroughly enjoy them and would love to have something that has um, a slightly different aspect to it, then uh, this is definitely a ship worth getting. So all in all, I think is a good addition to the game. And um, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.